Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter Range, and welcome back to The Catholic Citizen, Episode 5, where we cover this week's news from a Catholic perspective. Can't wait to talk about abortion, the Supreme Court, and much, much more here in just a second. Well, friends, it's great to have you with us back for episode five here on The Catholic Citizen. Uh, We're up to three viewers now, so this is really exciting. We've grown beyond my mom and sister. No, I'm just kidding, but um, it's always great to have you back each week as we look at this week's news from this biased Catholic perspective. But before we do that, I just want to invite you to help us out here at Awaken Catholic. Please first go to awakencatholic.org slash donate. Help us out, even if it's just $5 a month. That can be a tremendous support to us to keep these great programs going. I don't get paid a dollar. I'm doing this because I love you. I love this nation, and I want to see us become uh, even better as individuals, as a church, and as a nation. So please uh, support us at awakencatholic.org slash donate. Secondly, there's a great Catholic app that you can sign up uh, with here um, through Awaken Catholic, so you can get all this premium content um, right on your phone. You can listen to the podcasts on your way to work, whatever it may be. I have some friends who actually listen to the podcast on their way to work, so it's a great way to stay connected. You can also interact with some of the guest hosts and everything like that. I haven't been too active, but if you promise me that you'll get the app, I promise I'll be more active on the app with you. Uh, lastly, we have a great partnership with Hallow, so I want to encourage you as well to download the Halo app. Um, and use it for meditative purposes. Again, everything we do here, including you know using the Hallow app, is meant to draw us deeper into the heart of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to sign up for the Hallow app. Now, on to this week's show. Uh, first and foremost, we have to cover the preeminent issue of life which this nation faces. And unless this nation turns and repents from her wicked ways, we won't need God to punish us. We'll continue to do it ourselves because we are literally killing off the next generation of young people in this this nation. That is the issue of abortion. Unfortunately, the state of New Jersey has just announced in the past couple of months that the Democratic governor, Phil Murphy, uh, has uh, embraced this new state law concerning abortion, which will look much like the abortion law in New York state that Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo pushed forward there last year. But this particular bill would A, require healthcare workers to assist in abortions up to birth despite any conscientious objections. B, it would permit infanticide without any investigations into those cases. And C, would allow abortionists to perform abortions without being a licensed medical doctor. You can read more at pbs.com. But uh, the the fact that this is uh, being pushed through in another state in our union uh, should be a warning sign to all of us as far as how extreme, uh, in particular, the Democratic Party has become when it comes to this issue of abortion, allowing it through all nine months of pregnancy and forcing doctors and nurses, especially even and even in their training, to have to perform abortions themselves. You know, how Catholics can continue to support in any way, shape, or form Democratic politicians that support this is beyond the pale to me. And it's something we must stop and our church leaders need to stand up and speak out against. Please, God, lead us in our nation today. Secondly, though, there's some great news out of the Supreme Court of the United States. Just yesterday, they uh, shot down Governor, Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom's uh, draconian measures there in the state of California to try to prevent the virus, although the virus is rampant, even despite the fact that he's put on all these measures. Maybe it's because he himself is not wearing masks when he goes out to eat, as he's asking all the constituents there in California to do. But basically, the court uh, shut him down and said he can't... uh, give preferential treatment to shopping malls versus churches. Uh, It was a church that came before the Supreme Court and said, look, he's limiting the number of people that can come to church um, that's going against our constitutional rights. And especially given that he's keeping liquor stores open, he's keeping shopping malls open, all these other institutions, he shouldn't be allowed to do that, uh, uh, directly uh, target churches in this manner. Supreme Court said, yeah, we absolutely agree with that. They sent the case back down to the appellate court uh, to look at again. This comes in light of their decision that they made last week. And I want to read you some of this, this decision because it's absolutely fantastic when they gave uh, what I would call a Supreme Court slam down against the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo. 
in a 5-4 decision, um, and it's strange that it was so close, but Amy Coney Barrett cast the deciding vote in the Supreme Court's 5-4 decision against New York Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo's COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and this was, again, he was, Governor Cuomo was trying to restrict religious gatherings rather than, you know, all these other entities which have individuals shopping in them. And it showed a bias towards thinking that secular things are more important than the sacred. And that's the issue that we have here. It's not attempting to protect public health. There's nothing wrong with trying to do that. But when you're picking winners and losers in this COVID game, I mean, it's just simply not fair to say, yeah, Home Depot, you're good. Hundreds of people in there, not a problem. Good to church. No, no, no. That's where COVID can really spread. I mean, it just simply makes no sense. So Justice Neil Gorsuch, who I haven't always been happy with, although, you know, uh, appointed by President Trump and touted as a great pro-life judge and everything like that. I mean, he made a terrible decision when it came to redefining sex at the Supreme Court, but we'll get to that in another episode. In this particular uh, decision, though, just beautiful, uh, Mr. Judge Gorsuch. Now, he penned his own concurrence to the decision, writing that government is not free to disregard the First Amendment in times of crisis. And he called out Democratic governor, in particular, Andrew Cuomo, for his inconsistencies and directly targeting religious institutions. He wrote, the governor has chosen to, to impose no capacity restrictions on certain businesses he considers essential. And it turns out the businesses the governor considers essentials include hardware stores, acupuncturists, and liquor stores, bicycle repair shops, certain signage companies, accountants, lawyers, and insurance agents are all essential too. Gorsuch went on. So at least according to the governor, it may be unsafe to go to church, but it's always fine to pick up another bottle of wine, uh, shop for a new bike, or to spend the afternoon exploring your distal points and meridians. Who knew public health would be so perfectly aligned with secular convenience? Question mark. The only explanation for treating religious places differently, Gorsuch wrote, seems to be a judgment that what happens there just isn't as essential as what happens in secular spaces. That, concluded the justice, is exactly the kind of discrimination the First Amendment forbids. You know, while Gorsuch's opinion was strong, and praise God for that, the Supreme Court only decided this case by one vote. Now, think about that for a second. We were one vote away from Democratic or Republican governors from across the State of the Union being able to tell you and me, hey, look, you can only have 10 people in a church. Hey, look, you can only have 10 people come together and worship the Lord at one time. So praise God the Supreme Court made this decision. But very clearly, uh, we need to continue to pray for our Supreme Court and pray that we have presidents that are appointed that will appoint uh, judges that believe in the Constitution of the United States, including the First Amendment, the free exercise to assemble uh, to worship our Lord and Savior, to worship God in whatever form that takes place. You know, I mean, it's just we have to be cautious when it comes to these restrictions that have been placed. And again, we want to protect the public's health, but we cannot go overboard when it comes to telling you and I whether or not we can worship our Lord uh, in communion with our brothers and sisters. Now, thirdly, we acknowledge, as you know, we mentioned um, here on the show, the seriousness of COVID-19, and especially if you have pre-existing uh, conditions or if you're a certain age, this can be a very difficult illness and it can actually even indeed be deadly. Uh, but what we've also pointed out from time to time is the hypocrisy of elected officials who tell the public one thing and then they do their own thing. Uh, Senator Marco Rubio, former presidential candidate of the Republican Party, came out the other day in a Fox News interview and he just articulated this so well that, you know, when you see people on the streets dancing and tightly packed crowds celebrating because of uh, Vice President Biden's election win, nobody said a word. And it's with the same stuff now Rubio said. We've got these people that own a business and put their whole life's work into it. And you've got some guy behind a Zoom camera on television who gets paid to work from home, lecturing them about how they need to close their business. Uh, the hypocrisy is just people are tired of it, Rubio said. And I'm in a complete agreement with that. And we've outlined some of that hypocrisy here on the show, but the examples just keep coming in. And so we'll continue to report them. Recently, Austin Mayor Steve Adler recorded a video urging citizens of the Texas Capitol to stay home, be safe, all while he vacationed in Mexico. 
Yes, he taped this video telling people to stay home while he was on vacation in Mexico. Do you wonder why people don't take this seriously? And then you had uh, the Denver mayor, Michael Hanrock, uh, made a video to his constituents telling them, hey, maybe you should hold virtual gatherings with your family over Thanksgiving break. What did he do for Thanksgiving break? He traveled to Mississippi to visit with his family. I mean, it just really makes me upset. <laughs> and I think it should do, uh, it should make you upset as well. And, you know, people complain about uh, individuals not following mandates, not doing this, not wearing masks. Well, if we look to our leaders who are telling us, you know, in these uh, mostly democratic held states and these uh, certain cities to do this and do that, but they don't do it themselves, if they're not taking it that seriously, how are we supposed to think that we should be taking it seriously ourselves? So it's one of those cases of, you know, do as I say, not as I do. But fourthly today, uh, on top of all of this, you know, I think the human um, toll that uh, the lockdowns take place and the different things uh, that are being pushed forward on the populace, it has a tremendous human toll, right? Uh, nursing homes, we've been looking at that, trying to highlighting uh, the terrible tragedy which is taking place within our nursing homes with our elderly being alone and being by themselves, not able to see family members. And the Associated Press came out a month ago where they actually took a look at 50 15,000 facilities across the country, and they found that uh, the mortality rate in these homes outside of the COVID deaths uh, were to count for more than 40,000 deaths of failure to thrive cases. That's a roughly more than a 15% uh, increase in normal nursing he uh, health home deaths in these homes because of failure to thrive. The article also illustrated some personal examples, like the personal example of James Gill. Uh, June Lernetz went to visit her father's room at the Cherrywood Point in Plymouth, Minnesota in June for the first time in three months after the lockdowns took place. Uh, she was struck by a blast of heat when she entered the room, finding the thermostat at 85 degrees. His sheets were soaked in sweat, his hair was plastered to his head, and he was yelling and screaming and complaining that he couldn't even see because his eyes had been crusted over so badly. Um, so she, screaming, uh, you know, called for an aide to help. Um, she ran into the room, and he was pointing to his diaper area where he was hurting. Uh, they sniped off his diaper, revealing that his genitals were deep red and skin was uh, sloughing off, was, was, was basically coming off because no one had changed his diaper for how many months, we don't know. Um, if this doesn't make you upset and angry and want to take another look at the lockdowns and what we've done, particularly for our elder, uh, elderly uh, population, then I don't know what will. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's wrong. It's evil. It needs to stop. And thankfully... Um, uh, you know, some legislation is happening right here in Ohio, which is changing this. Um, two days later, let me just finish that story, though, of James Gill. Two days later, uh, James Gill ended up dying. Uh, he died in the nursing home from a failure to thrive. Um, you know, people are losing their lives. Yes, they're losing their lives of COVID, so we need to take every precaution we, we can uh, when it comes to nursing homes and COVID and everything. But if you have nurses that are going home and they're going shopping and they're coming back in anyway, why can't family members, maybe family members who are being even more cautious, go in and see their loved ones? Their last precious days on earth, they're not allowed to see and visit their loved ones and be an advocate. I mean, my dad was in a nursing home for a little bit. Um, I know how difficult it can be unless a family member is there advocating for those individuals. And we met some tremendous angels who are working in the nursing homes, but we also met some devils in the nursing home as well. Um, so you need a family member in there advocating for those patients. Now, thankfully, as I mentioned, State Representative D.J. Swearingen has signed on to legislation. He just post, posted this on his Facebook the other day. Um, to allow family members in the state of Ohio into these nursing homes. He wrote, many are suffering in our nursing facilities. I co-sponsored HB 770, which names one family member an essential caregiver. This person will now be able to visit their loved one in the nursing home as long as they follow health protocols. Loneliness should never complicate our citizens' care and health. DJ, thank you so much 
for doing this. Really tremendously appreciate it. I think it's a very practical solution that we can ensure that people in nursing homes are cared for and, and loved in their last days of their life. All right, finally, last story for you. I know I throw a lot at you in a little bit of a time, but um, that's all they give me here at the Catholic Citizen. So, uh, but finally, professor of Christian theology at Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary tweeted out the other day something that I think is a good reminder for us all these days. It's very simple, short, and to the point. I picked it up from Franklin Graham's um, uh, Instagram account, actually, because uh, I don't have the, uh, the, the theologian or the professor's here, his name at the moment, but uh, he wrote, uh, these are the truths we need today. I'm going to add a couple myself as well, but these are the truths we need today, to which all of which I say amen. Number one, government is not God. Number two, men are not women. The fact that I even have to say that in this country today. Number three, identity is not self-created. Our identity comes from God, from God above, who makes us our sons and daughters, who redeems us, who loves us. We're not identity, our identity is not, our primary identity is not in the work that we do or, you know, our gender or our sexual orientation. We have all these things that people identify themselves by today. No, our primary identity comes from the fact that we are beloved children of God. And we've just forgotten that. We've pushed that to the sides. All right. Next up, he says, church is not optional, pastors are not entertainers, justice is not Marxist, riots are not righteous, truth is not fluid. You know, just we have this idea of like, oh, you have your truth today, I have my truth, and everybody can have their own truth. No, there is the truth, period. Church, or excuse me, truth is not fluid. And then lastly, the pastor writes that Christ is not dethroned. Amen, amen, amen. Let me just add two more to that. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Okay, that's something that we'll dive deeply in here more in the show. And I encourage you to go back and watch a little bit of the Catholic vote where I took a look at this issue of marriage. But that's a really important, incredibly important thing for our society today. And it's an important thing for our government as well. And I know there's some libertarians out there that don't think the government should be involved in marriage, but I think it needs to be involved in marriage because marriage has a purpose, and that is to bring together the union of the spouses, but then also to help procreate our very species, right? And so if every child ever created in the history of the universe came from a mom and a dad, every child deserves both a mom and a dad. And we know that sociologically, uh, psychologically, children thrive best when they have both their mom and dad involved in their lives. So the government is engaged in marriage because it cares about the future of its citizenry. It cares about those kids. But we'll get to more of that maybe in a later show. Lastly, I just want to add to this tweet that this gentleman sent out um, that abortion, it's not a right. It's not a right to take the life of another human being. So friends, you know, the God of the universe became man, and we're now in this Advent season, and I just want to encourage you uh, to take time to enter into the silence, enter into the darkness, take some time to pray and to prepare for the coming of the Lord, because Jesus is coming. He's coming back, and he's coming back soon for you and for me. Um, so we must be prepared not only to celebrate the fact that he has come, but to prepare for the fact that he is coming again. You know, the first time he came, he came as a vulnerable child. He came not just as a triumphant king, but he came as a little baby that was dependent upon his mother. And the only way that we could see him was the fact that he was being held by his mother's arms. He came dependent. He came within the context of a family, a family with a mom and a dad, Mary and Joseph. So this Christmas season, this Advent season, as we prepare Take some more time to be with your mom, with your dad, with your family members and love them the best that we can. Because if we want to rebuild culture, yes, we have to go out and we have to preach the truth today like we never have before. But first and foremost, we have to love our families, build up the domestic church and welcome Christ into our homes and hearts there. Only then will we rebuild the church and when we re rebuild the church, we then, we will most certainly bless this nation. God bless. We'll see you next week here on The Catholic Citizen.
This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app slash awaken.